everyone. Welcome back to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. If you're there at home, uh, you're not required to turn on your webcam or microphone if you don't wish. Be advised that the class is being recorded for playback. So everything that I'm doing on my screen, my webcam, the chat, all of that is being recorded for playback in the class. I'm going to do a brief little canvas thing and then we'll get into animate in a moment. So you want to make sure here your computer is on. You don't need to go to animate yet, um, but just make sure your computer is on. Um, the hybrid aspect of our class is that we've got Canvas. And here in Canvas is where I will put a variety of uh, digital assets for you. Um, one is the recording from Tuesday. So remember that every week, there is the live session module. And before the lecture, you will see, here's what you need to do to prepare for the class. And then after the class, I add the uh, recording. So I added the recording um, Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. And so everything that I talked about and was all recorded and uh, it's playbackable right there on Canvas. Today's recording. Today's lecture, when it's finished recording, it will also be added uh, to Canvas, and that'll be uh, by the end of the day or so. Did anyone replay the recording or take a quick look at it again or fast forward it or anything like that since last time? Probably not. That's okay because uh, we just started the semester. But as the class goes on, you probably do want to watch the video, replay the video, pause it, rewind it, fast forward it, and such. Um, because everything that I do in the class is going to be recorded, and therefore you always have access to it. If there's any notes or documents or whatever that I generate during class, I will also add them there on the live session. So that's how every week will be. There will be a uh, live session module. So this is stuff I covered last time. Uh, there is a homework. I want to briefly look at the homework in a moment. It's not due until Sunday. But then um, I want to mention something about it in a moment. So according to my canvas here, so far we've got 11 submissions. Very good. I think we've got a full class of 30 or so, whatever it is. So just about half or so have completed it. Very good. Um, it's due Sunday, but I do want to talk about that in a moment. Question. Uh, so Sunday is such a Sunday and then the replies are on Sunday. Yes, every uh, so every homework will have a specifics, so always make sure you check the specifics. Uh, ultimately, the homework is due by Sunday, but there is a part do this by Friday and then do this by Sunday. So always check the uh, homework for the details. But basically, everything's due on a Sunday of that week. So it's not due yet, but I will look at the homework in, in a moment. And then we've got material to talk about today. Now, officially, we will be working with the main topics of the class next week. This week is about sort of intro to things. Uh, and then next week, we'll start to actually do the, the work and the like. Um, and so we'll get on to that. Now, last time I had people sign in on a uh, little sign-in sheet here. This time, I want to do it slightly differently. Uh, I want to know... Uh, I want to put a name to a face. I want to know who's this talented person that's doing this amazing work. So we're going to do another sign in, but we're going to do it slightly differently. And we have left and right, but you know, which direction are we looking at? So um, I guess we'll do it this way. So right side is over here, left side is over here. So if you're on the right side, do the right side. If you're on the left side, do the left side. Uh, put your name within the grid that you are in the room just so that I know like who's sitting where. And it's not that you have to sit in the same place every week, but for, the, for today, I'm in on the grid so I can kind of start to put a name to a face. And so on, just want to put it aside. And you actually there. And then eventually I'll get to know you and I'll know who's getting that A plus, who's getting that not A plus. So pass that on. That's for our attendance today. At home, you can just say hello in the chat and I'll see that you're there at home. All right, so again, it's not due yet, but what I want to do is look at what's been submitted so far 
on this week's uh, homework in terms of question number uh, four. So I haven't seen these yet myself. I'll be looking at them for the first time right now. You might have already seen them yourself. And notice here, well, make sure you put your first answer by Friday and make sure you respond to classmates by Sunday. And then both of those will add up to the points this week. So I'm just going to take a quick look at what people have responded here uh, for number four. Uh, so let me just kind of go at the end first over here. Um, so I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, but I'm just looking at everyone's work for a moment. So okay, we got have a, Hell of a Boss for the animation that inspires and for the game, uh, Stray and their art style. Okay, so the reason I asked the question about what is something that inspires you is because as we go through the class, right, you're going to create your own character, you're going to create your own animation, your own game, and therefore looking at what you like um, will give you a starting point for you to create what you're trying to create. Now, um, if you maybe were to put one word, I'm going to pick a few of these, but if you were to pick one word to describe either this animation or this game, if any of you know these, uh, what would you say for any of these? So, if you know hell of a boss, what would you say as one word? Or if you know stray, what would you say as one word to describe it? Any thoughts? Or you could say, I don't know those. I don't know those. Okay, let's see a next one. Uh, Zelda is probably the most inspiring game to me. Enjoy all animations. Okay, what's one word to describe Zelda? Adventurous, maybe. All right. Let's move on to over here. Um, Avatar and Disney and Marvel and uh, such. Okay, what's one word? Obviously not the James Cameron one, right? Uh, the, the good one, right? So what would you say one word as describing Avatar? Super cool. Okay, that's a good one. <laughs> Let's see another one over here. Um, it's okay, so we have to go over here. Uh, was Haloid or Halo Master Chief versus Samus by Monty Aum. Okay, Ruby There's, and The Last of Us. Okay, that's a big one right now. That's so big, right, that it's actually a, a, a streaming show. How many of you played the game, Last of Us? How many of you saw the series or vice versa? So isn't it interesting how some games and such evolve onto these big multimedia things, these global... Uh, shows that everyone's talking about. So the point of this is just the variety of what people are saying. So okay, animation, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, and Cuphead. So for these that you're seeing your classmates answering, maybe you're also getting your own idea. Yeah, that is an interesting thing. Yeah, that is something that, how do they do that animation? That is um, how did it make that game? Can I do a version of it? So all of these are the question to have you thinking about what you will strive for in the class. And in any endeavor, but often in, our, in an artistic endeavor, you um, look at something that inspires you to uh, then do your version of it. Let's see, a couple more block games and Skylanders. So just a variety of what people are uh, responding. So I'll do the grades on this officially later, but it's always interesting to look at this particular question. And then as the semester goes on, I see people, okay, I see the influence in Cuphead. I see the influence in Avatar in your work. And that's perfectly fine uh, to stand on the shoulders of giants to go with what inspires you and then add upon it. And on um, Monday, I showed examples from a previous semester what their work was. Maybe you would see, oh, now I recognize what they did based on this other game or this other property. So just consider that on your own work. What inspires you? Club Penguin, that's classic. Oh, Monkey Island, that's even more classic. So that's a good one. All right. so. 
If you haven't done the homework, it's due on Sunday, but there's lots of responses so far, so that's great. Um, this week's homework is just this introductory thing. Next week is when we're actually gonna start to work with the, the tools and the drawings and all of that stuff. So let's move on over here. I had everyone turn on their computers and then now we're gonna get into Adobe Animate. So if you want to now, you can go to your start menu and go to launch Adobe Animate. Now, log into it and when it pops up that says, are you new to Animate? Don't skip that. Just wait right there. You want it to start up, you want to log in and then it should pop up to ask you, are you new to Animate? Just stop at that point. Gonna start up one moment. If you did skip it, I don't know if there's an easy way to get back to it, but if you skip it, that's okay. But just log in and then don't do anything else. Don't don't skip the thing. Just log in and just pause right there. Here's why you needed headphones. There's a fun little animation, a little introductory animation here. Uh, all of us would probably say yes on this. We are new to this. Uh, so everyone should click on this yes, put your headphones on, and listen to this yes. So just watch that for a moment. It's like 45 seconds or so. It's just a little flashy thing. I'll play it here, but I'll play it with no volume. So this is talking about a modern application that lets you do rigging. Let me show that. See that eventually we will be able to do what is known as rigging, where you draw a character, the limbs of a character, of a mech, of a ghost, whatever, and you rig it. Basically, you add bones to the character, and then it'll be able to move in a variety of ways. So you drew the character, then you add the bones, you rig it, and then it'll be able to move around in a variety of ways. See how they're doing that there. The original drawing, and then you can make it do a cool TikTok dance. Can you do, you know, uh, horses and everything? There's the tail flopping around as well. It's just really promoting. Expect. Notice here they've got a little bit of transparency. Those fins are semi transparent. 
they're translucent and you have that ability to create flat characters, uh, complex characters, we saw human characters, animal characters, etc. So just a quick 57 second thing to get you hyped about. This is what this app can do. And as I said, in this class, we're working with Adobe Animate, but this is one of many software out there that lets you do animation. Basically, it's any tool is the right tool for your vision. And in this class, we're doing this tool. So after you play that, you can close it. Then it should pop up here. Now, here's what our first in-class homework will be. There are six mini tutorials here. You can pick any one of these. And we're going to spend a little bit of time, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. We'll see. Pick any one of these. Go through the tutorial. When you get to the end of the tutorial, call me and show me that you did it. But we'll do this first. Uh, our first little dive in here, pick any one of these. And I think it changes for everyone. Does, does it kind of rearrange itself? Does yours look different than mine? Yeah. So on any one of these, pick any one of them. Go through the tutorial. It's going to have you step through some screens. Do it for a moment. Uh, we'll see how long that takes. Call me over, call the assistants over if you need any help. But let's go through one, at least one of these. You can do more if you want. But when you go through one, call me over, show me what you did. Right, so for those of you at home, uh, you can kind of work at your own pace. Uh, you can follow along with what I'm doing or just go at your own pace, do it at your own time. You don't have to be running the app at the same time as me. Those of us that are here in person, we have the software and everything. So everyone here in person is doing it. If you're there at home, just follow along at your own pace.
Right, so we'll move on in one moment, but let me just check in with everyone. Um, what do you think so far about the software? Complicated? Whatever you think about it, remember with any software, there's always going to be a learning curve. What does this button do? What does that panel do? That's why we spend the first couple of weeks or so just getting around in the interface. There's so many buttons, so many panels, so many tools. This is a complicated software. They can let you make characters, animations. Science, it's very complicated software. That's why we spend some time on it. So keep working a little bit more. Uh, try to create one of those tutorials. Call me over when you have it. We'll move on in a moment. I also want to check in here. Uh, today's role is being done by you putting your name on the grid here. Those of you who came a little bit late, um, you need to put your name on the grid here. So this is the right side of the room. This is the left side of the room. Put your name in the grid, depending on what space you're sitting on. So just kind of want to start to get to know you a little bit, like who's, who's who. You don't have to be on the same seat every time, but if you came in late, who needs to sign in?
All right, everyone, let's say at the latest, wherever you're at, at 1245, uh, I'll move on to what I want to further show. So a few more minutes to work on the one that you've got or any other one, and at 1245, we'll go on. All right, everyone, so wherever you're at in the process, that's okay. You can continue with it next time. Uh, you can just click next, next, next to close it all. Uh, and then I think after that, it'll take you back to this screen. So uh, wherever you're at, just finish it. And then if it comes back to this screen, click skip. So if you've got any file open for the moment, you can go to file close. 
close or close all. If it asks you to save, you don't have to save it. It might take you back to some screen like this. Now, that the very when I said today, okay, let's start animate, but then do this. So the very first time you ever start animate, it'll ask you, are you new? And then it'll show you that little animation. Then it'll show you those little mini tutorials. If you ever want to go back to those tutorials, they're also found over here under help, hands-on tutorial. So there's the ones you saw plus other ones. So just make a note that if you ever wanna go back to practice all of these, uh, they're found under the help menu, hands-on, and they're all in there. So I wanna kind of go to get through this together a little bit of uh, the interface. And here's the challenge with teaching computer software to uh, classes. Some people, well, yeah, I'll do it really fast. I'm done in five minutes. Other people need 10 minutes. And whatever level that you're at is fine. You will get to the point that you need to get to, however you will get to it. So if I'm here to say, okay, now click this and now click this. For some of you, that's the perfect speed. For some of you, that's too slow. So the class will be divided up in a little bit about do it your way and also do it my way. So there'll be a little bit for everyone in your particular learning skills. For the moment, we will do the do it my way, just so that we're all looking at it the same way. And then as we get more comfortable, and as I then have you do more tasks, you can then do it your way at your own speed. So at the moment, I've got here this interface, welcome to animate, start a new file. So we have these common um, types of projects to create a full HD animated movie, an Android game with a 16 by nine aspect ratio, an iPad sized game, a banner for a website or just a blank canvas and more. So you see right out of the bat here, right out of the gate here, we have uh, these common ways to create stuff. Skip those for the moment and click on more presets. Further, get another screen here with even more plus examples at the bottom. So what I really like about Adobe Animate is, okay, it's complicated, but it's often showing you, check this out, try this. Here's a tutorial, teach yourself. Because no one in a whole classroom is going to work at the exact same pace as everyone else. And that's okay. So whenever we do any of these in-class things and you're done with it in five minutes, there's always more that you can do. And I really will tell you that I've taught these classes for years. And those that go beyond and do more and are always practicing, get better at something, get better results, get more comfortable with it. If you only do the minimal baseline of work in my classes, you'll get a good grade. But when you go above and beyond and learn more, you go beyond just a grade. So we've got on the top character animation. We have various sizes of projects. We can make a 4K project here. So what's really cool about this type of software this is a vector-based drawing tool. Uh, there's different types of drawing tools. This one's vector-based. And basically, that just means that it can be super high quality in many sizes. High quality as a YouTube video, high quality on a big screen TV, on a device. It's a vector-based drawing tool. And we're seeing here, make it standard size, make it 4K size. And as you select these, you have various sizes that appear on the side. You also see here, we have something listing a frame rate. If you're a gamer, you know about this, right? You want to get those FPSs. You're barely running 60 FPS. You know, you've got to upgrade to 144. You don't know what that means, though. That's okay. But frame rate, how fast, how smooth does the animation play? We have here, we can set that lower or higher as we want in something called platform. Don't worry about that just at the moment. Social, okay, we can create projects that go to various social networks. Cool, we have games, low quality, high quality games specifically for various devices. Cool, various sizes. For education, we can make, you know, better, um, we can make better PowerPoints through here. We have ads. This is also like kind of for social media, web-based projects, and then advanced. So the very first step before you do anything with animate is picking a particular project type. 
there's a lot to choose from. Also later on, um, over on advanced, we can look at things here like VR, 360 environments and panoramas and all this stuff, which is in beta, still figuring it out. Uh, did anyone uh, hear about or see the big event that Apple had yesterday or two days ago? Where, they, where they're selling this brand new $3,000, $3,500 VR headset thing that makes you look like you're from the future and you can see uh, augmented reality and such. So we can tap into all of the latest cutting edge of all of this stuff in our, in our software here. Get back to that later. For the moment, let's go with character animation. Uh, question. Yes, good question for at home. The question was, does your computer hardware depend on what projects you can do? Yes. So the more complicated 4K projects and the VR projects require better hardware. Um, so be advised about that, that I have the ability to create a 4K project, but maybe my seven-year-old computer can't quite handle it. Uh, so yes, it is, it is uh, something to consider. So if you're all thinking about well, I want to do this at home. Yeah, you, you can and try it out and see how well it works. And if it doesn't quite work, that's kind of an indicator. Maybe I need to upgrade my computer. And what I would say, uh, consider if you are looking for a new computer, uh, consider getting a gaming computer. Gaming computers are often set up that they've got lots of RAM and good CPUs and fast hard drives and all of that. And the gaming computer works really good for creating games, creating animation, doing multimedia doing Photoshop and such. So the better computer, the better experience. For the moment, we will just go over here, character animation. Let's go with the HD, this first HD one, nothing to change on details or frame rate, nothing else. Just select that first HD one and click create. So we get a document, a blank document. This is the best thing and the worst thing. A blank document. This can be anything. But now, where do I start? So first thing we'll do is we'll save our project. Now, how many of you uh, thought about bringing a USB flash drive to take your work back home? If you didn't, that's okay. What we're doing today is not going to be mission critical that you've got to take it home. Now, we do have Google Drive and Apple iCloud and all of that cloud storage stuff. And I think even the college gives you free storage. Let me check here. Um, over on the um, over on your college account, I'm still logged into my college account here. Uh, if you if you never really looked here under G Suite apps, uh, oh, I've got Google Drive. So the college does give you storage space tied to your Southwestern account. You just need to log into the MySWC account, go up to G Suites, and have a Google Drive here. So. For the moment, what we're creating here, we're going to save it. We're going to save it to the desktop. Um, if you want to take it home, the work that we do here, you need to take it home either on a flash drive. You need to email it to yourself. You need to upload it to your Google Drive or OneDrive or iCloud or whatever you want to use. Because when these computers turn off, they erase. They go back to factory settings. If you logged into a site, if you... Uh, saved a file on the desktop. If you made changes to the wallpaper, all of that erases itself. It comes back to our factory defaults. So don't forget to take your, home, your work home with you. We have various ways to do it. If you need help, of course, ask me, ask the assistants, but you need to take your work with you. At the moment, this empty document, let's just do file save as. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Find the desktop on the left side. Um, on the desktop here, let's create a folder. Let's organize ourselves. Um, so this is kind of interesting. I've been teaching, my intro is in Canvas, but I'll also say I've been teaching at Southwestern College since 2007. That's a little while ago. And I've seen the evolution of students, um, how nowadays, because we're all using apps, 
and mobile devices and tablets and all of that, we don't really have to care about organization. We just go to the particular app and it's there. We go to this app, my stuff is there. In these old school computers, it's very important to organize your work. And a lot of times people just, okay, uh, there's the desktop, I'll save to the desktop. But things can get very or disorganized. Where's my file? Where's this homework? What did I do with my stuff? So we need to get into the habit of organizing our work in folders. Um, so here within, I'm, I'm about to save my file to the desktop, but I'm going to create a new folder. So click that new folder icon and call it week one or day two or put today's date on it or whatever. I'll call it week one. This is the week one of the summer. Let's enter. So I'm creating a folder. I'm organizing new folder on the desktop, call it whatever. Double click it. So I'm on the desktop in my folder I just created. And I'll give this a name. Just put your last name, today's date, call it whatever. something and notice it's ending in dot fla um, that three letter extension at the end tells you what kind of file it is uh, so this is an fla file this comes from the old name of adobe animate adobe animate's been around 30 years did you notice that when you started it up when there was that little comet guy there was a little copyright it's a copyright 1993 to 2023 that's 30 years this software has been around 30 years Back in the old days, it was called Adobe Flash. So it's been upgrading throughout the 30 years. Nowadays, it's called Adobe Animate. So FLA was the old name. Um, this extension part right here tells you what kind of file it is. Uh, if this were called um, .jpg, what kind of file is that? Project or file, anyone know what is a JPG? A picture, a JPEG. Okay, what about if this were saved as DOC or DOCX? A document, a Word document, et cetera. We've got PDF, we've got PowerPoint, et cetera. This one is saving as .fla. It's an Adobe Animate file. So I bring that up because if it doesn't have the right extension there, maybe it won't open up properly. Maybe it won't work properly. So make sure that the file is the right type of file, .fla. Click save. Now we've got this window. So let me ask you a trick question. It might have, maybe the tutorial showed you how to do this. Maybe you can figure it out. Sign your name on the empty document there. It's okay. Sign my name. So that means draw my name, write my name, I guess. Okay, how do I write on screen? Try that. Figure out what tool, what menu, what thing do I select to just sign my name? And then it'll become secondhand where you'll eventually be able to find the right tool for the right task. I haven't told you, perhaps. You've never used this software, perhaps. But commonly in many drawing software, probably the little pencil or brush tool or whatever is often the tool that lets you draw. So just to get very simple here, I'm going to draw my name. I'm going to write my name. But I see that there's three, there's at least three types of drawing tools in this software. If you hover over it with the mouse, this is the classic brush. So one over here is the pencil tool. This one over here is the fluid brush tool. Select any one of them, probably just the classic brush. Try to sign your name, and you'll quickly remember it. It's really hard to draw or write with a mouse. And so, yes, for the moment, we're going to use the mouse, which is not the best way to draw. I do have a whole classroom full of drawing pads, which are just basically going to be like an actual pencil or pen, but digital. You'll get access to those soon enough. But for the moment, just write your name and then also say one sentence. Today is 
this is so hard to do. I need a real drawing tool. But anyway, just write something. And maybe um, draw it or write it in a different color. This automatically drew it or wrote it in blue. Maybe I want to write it in red or purple or yellow. How do you change the color of your drawing tool? Maybe somewhere in the interface you'll find it. Somewhere you'll figure it out, and then you'll be able to further make a change. The point of this very simple concept here is this software is complicated. There's a bunch of panels on the right side, tools on the left, a timeline on the bottom, but maybe on yours, your timeline is at the top, your panels are on the left, maybe you've got extra panels popping out over here. This is for further the complication of this software. You can customize your interface. So, Also, my screen's slightly different size because uh, of the projector. But um, one thing that would be confusing for people, well, you're, my icon isn't there. Mine's over here. Mine's different. I'm confused. Here's something that we want to do when we come into the room, just to make sure we're all on the same page before you do anything more. Go up to the window menu. So at the very top, we have all these menu items, file, edit, et cetera. Go to the window menu at the top. <coughs> On this big pop-up that appears here at the bottom, you will see workspaces at the bottom. In my case, I was doing the doll tutorial, and it says you're using the doll workspace. The space, all of these. Um, put it on classic for the moment, just so that everyone's looking at the same thing. So this is up on the window menu, and then workspaces at the bottom, and select classic. Right, see how things kind of arrange themselves a little bit. Okay, cool. Window, workspace, animator. That changes there. Okay, cool. Just jump through different ones is the point. Check out the different ones that are there. So Adobe Animate can do so much, not only character-based, animation-based, but also interactivity-based. Later on in the class, in part two of the class, we will see about connecting actual devices to the app so that you make a project and then it shows up on your device, an actual interactive game, an actual interactive project. For example, here in my debug workspace, it will show me my variables and memory being used and all of this stuff that's happening on the device as I make my projects. So it's complicated software and it's divided into these workspaces. Let's all go to essentials, just so that we're all looking at the same thing. And even in, the, and even in whatever workspace you set up, you can further customize yourself. Notice on the right side, so I have properties, library, assets, SWF history, accessibility. Then on the side, further on the side over here, I have these others, color, align, et cetera. If I click on color, okay, color mixer, info, just clicking on different ones just to kind of see what's there. Lots of panels for lots of uh, tasks. And further click these little double arrows. Maybe I don't need to see those panels at the moment. Maybe I need to get to them eventually, but I don't need them to be in my way. Maybe I wanna focus on my drawing. So I can close a panel. These other panels, I can open those. Your interface can get very cluttered very quickly. 
but it can be further customized. Even the tools on the left side can be hidden. The tools on the left side or any panel, you can basically go to the edge of the panel and you might get the little arrow here to stretch it out. Maybe I want to see my tools like that. One long strip, one little square. Maybe I want actually, oh, I want to move the tool, uh, the panel off to a different spot. You can grab a panel at the top and move it around. Notice there, just grab this one and tuck it over to the right. Here, tuck it or dock it at the bottom. There's just all of this customization that you can do. Let's play with that for a moment. Move all these panels all over the place in weird ways. This is when it's really nice to have nice big monitors or multiple monitors, maybe on one monitor. If you noticed up on here, I've got one monitor on the side over here where Zoom is at. So maybe I, on my side monitor, I have one set of tools on the side, one panel. So on, one, on my monitor over here, I've got some things. On my other monitor here, I've got other things. There's just all of this customization that can be done. And if you really mess up the whole interface, okay, go back to window, go back to workspace, reset. So just open panels, close them, move them around, see what happens, see what you like. But then when you wanna go back to the basics, you can reset an interface. It wants to confirm, click yes, goes back to the defaults. So this is to show you that as we get more comfortable with the software, I encourage you to, yes, set up your interface to do it the way you want. That makes sense for you. I mean, if you're left-handed, maybe you want things on the left side versus the right side. Um, so customize things as you want. But knowing about resetting it back to the defaults, especially if I'm doing a lesson about, okay, everyone click on this. But mine's on the left, yours is on the right. Confusing. We can all be at a baseline level. You can even save somewhere here. You can select to save your own interface to get back to it easily. But again, don't bother on these computers because when they get turned off, they just reset back to the defaults. At home, on your own version of the software, you can make your own interfaces and save them and get back to the workspace easily. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. But let's say I wanted to zoom in to really draw something very um, precisely. One of the things that we will do very often in this software is zoom in, zoom out. I did it very quickly. I've been using this software for years. You'll also get used to using the software. So zooming in, there's like five ways to do this. One way, for example, on the keyboard, if you press control, if hold control, press plus or press minus, Zoom in, zoom out. Try that for a moment on the keyboard. Control plus, control minus. Also try control scroll wheel on the mouse, right? The mouse has a scroll wheel. When you're scrolling up and down on a website, hold down control on the keyboard. Scroll wheel, zoom in, zoom out. Wherever your mouse is at, that's where you're zooming in, zooming out. You have also, let's say I've been zooming in, zooming out. If you press control one, it kind of fills up the screen. So sometimes you need to snap into a view, control one. And I'm not gonna show you every single shortcut and, and such right now. This is something that you learn a little bit at a time and the software teaches it to you as well. Did you notice that when you hovered over, for example, the brush tool, it said classical brush B. The letter B on the keyboard is the shortcut. If I'm using some tool and I wanna jump quickly to the brush tool, I can press B on the keyboard, I'm on the brush. If I want to jump over to some other tool, the text tool, keyboard shortcut T, press T, jump to the text tool, etc. All of these tools, you can see they have some um, 
shortcut with just the letter, not control V or whatever. It's just the letter V, the letter L. And little by little, you will start to learn these shortcuts. As a beginner, you're going to be clicking with the mouse everywhere. But as you get more advanced, you want to uh, learn and get used to using the shortcuts to quickly jump between the interface, quickly open up this panel over here, uh, quickly um, get this tool over here, quickly test the project. Just keyboard shortcuts are really going to be helpful as time goes on. But you learn them little by little. and. I think we can probably find maybe assistance. If you can find um, Adobe Anime keyboard uh, cheat sheet, something like that, um, find us something like that. I think you can put it in the um, data files uh, on the desktop for us. So the assistance in a moment will find us uh, a cheat sheet of all of these uh, tools in a moment. So just getting used to the software that'll come with time. I've been doing so much hard work so far. And if the power goes out, I might lose my work. So here's a shortcut you might know from other apps. What's a quick way to save your work? Let's say you're writing an essay in Word. What's a shortcut there to save your work? Control S. We have Control S here as well, every app basically. So you wanna save your work every once in a while. There is an auto save, but you wanna save once in a while, Control S. And it reminds you that you haven't saved anything on the top left corner. It should be a better reminder, but there's a little asterisk right there. And that little star is supposed to say, you haven't saved your work in a while. You're gonna lose it if the power goes out. And once I save it, the asterisk goes away and yeah, I saved it. So in the chat there, we're getting the shortcut there. We can also put it in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, web design folder for the people here. So, to learn the interface and then how we use it with the tools to then make characters and then environments and animations and games and lots of stuff. We have to learn how to crawl before we can walk, before we can run and then fly. So let's take our first break. We've been here a while. Um, it's 1.15-ish. Let's take a break, 10 minutes, 1.25. Um, if you want to stay here, step out. Um, bathroom, break, et cetera. If you're there at home, take a break. We'll be back at 1.25. Make sure you signed in. Such, I think the only place that's open is in our cafeteria, which is way in the corner, in the corner of the campus. Uh, I think we might have snacks in the bookstore right here. Is it open? I don't know. Yes, okay, so we'll go there. Okay, so there's a spot for the one. There's a two of them. I don't know if I just need one. We might as well do this. So, what about for the schedule thing? Because I think I have the other instructor probably do this. Right. So, um, here's how we do it today. First week only. Monday, Wednesday, 12. What will you know with that uh, subsequent weeks? Uh, do you have the little section down here? Um, that's Just to put some time so you can follow it exactly. But if I click in Tuesday from 12 to 3, does that come sound like you? I do. It, 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 the intermission class is Monday to Thursday. Monday to Thursday. Okay, but on Friday from 12 to 3. Obviously, yeah. we'll just put it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just
but in the future class, I can see that. Is there a right down? Uh, what do I write down? Uh, just the first week, Monday, Wednesday, week 12. Let me check the thing over there and see if it's all filled out in the phone. Oh, for this one, I love the for the Oh, uh, that one also has technically the first week is in person. Mm -hmm. Within the time set that it, time concept that is happening, this would be the right as well. This is supposed to be led into. So the times that concept are from 12. Turn about it's like the portable time comes like this is more than <laughs> yes, but uh, just go ahead and put what it is, and then uh, I'm gonna sign up. Uh, what you could do from time to time this morning. Yeah, yeah, this is.
All right, everyone, let's go on. So uh, right before the break, I was saying about shortcuts and such. So uh, on uh, there's a uh, there's a sort of a, uh, official cheat sheet on all the shortcuts. And in this class, in this room, um, I have access to this shared folder that all of you can get access to as well. Um, try this. So minimize all the icons, go to the desktop. Uh, here on the desktop, there should be an icon on the left, data files. Um, so try this. So just minimize everything. Go to the data files icon folder here on the left. Uh, in there, there's a bunch of folders. You should see one called web design. Does everyone see that? The same as me. There's a web design folder. Um, inside of the web design folder, there should be at the very top, alphabetically, 0 CIS 125 summer 2023. Open that folder. So I will be able to pass you items while we're live in the class in this folder. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put uh, this, I'm going to put it on Canvas, but I'm also going to put it here for you now, this uh, link for these Adobe shortcuts, which I think I can just drag and drop. Say that again. Oh, well, it's just fine to also show what's there. So let's try this. I just put in a uh, an item there in that folder. Uh, double click the item and it should open up the website. We'll also put a graphics version for you there in a bit. But the point is that on in these computers, in this room, on the desktop, we have that data files folder, then the web design folder, and then at the top, CIS-125. So myself or the assistants will put items there for you. And what I've put there so far are the shortcuts. So obviously I'm not saying memorize these and there's a quiz or whatever, but the uh, faster you learn the things that you do often, the better. I'm often going to select something with lasso or I'm often going to go to rigging to make my character animate with bones. So they all have a shortcut, they're all listed here. What's also cool about this uh, link right here, this is also basically the, the free book, the free textbook of Adobe Animate. Because on the left side, do you see we've got a Adobe Animate user guide? Click on that on the left. And instead of buying a book, there's no required book for this software. It's all online. The book, the manual is all online. Uh, this link here, Adobe Animate user guide, that's chapter one of the book. So whatever I show in class on how to do something, there's always going to be the online version. Uh, and there's always going to be the ability for you to move ahead, for you to see, okay, what's next? Let me learn about this. Let me learn about that. As the class catches up, I want to further go on. Let me learn about frame-by-frame -frame animation. Let me learn about the brush tool. So obviously, I will have a, 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 a guide or a um, level that we're all going at. But I, for all of you, if you ever want to go at your own level, here it is, the book, the chapters on your own, skip ahead, look at your own thing, uh, search for a specific thing that you're interested in and learn how to do it before we get to it. And to tell you again, when, we, when I showed the examples on Monday, the ones that seemed more complete, the ones that seemed more advanced and such, those were the people that were just constantly learning on their own besides outside of class. Uh, those that seem like, okay, it looks like a pretty good thing. Those are the ones that only did the work of the class. It's up to you and your amount of time in real life to spend on it. But the more you put effort on any endeavor, the more it pays off. So getting back to animate. How many of you have previously used software like Photoshop or Illustrator? Raise your hand most people, many people, um, you will see a lot of similarities. It's all part of the same suite. It's all the Adobe Creative Cloud. So there'll be things that are familiar. Layers, for example. So at the bottom here, uh, just to make sure everyone's looking at the same thing, make sure you're over on the Essentials workspace. 
At the bottom, we have this very important panel, the timeline. And if you did the tutorial, it talked a little bit about timeline using it, but not what it is. So the timeline represents the action that's going on in your project. At the moment, I have one frame. I'm on frame one. This one F means I'm on the current frame, frame one. And then they're marked 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way to infinity. And they're also marked right here, one S. And here, two S. What do you think S means? What's that? Seconds, exactly. If my project is 30 FPS, 30 frames per second, that means in one second, however fast that is, there are 30 frames. And the smoothest types of animation, 24 frames and higher, of animation are smoother. Uh, 12 frames per second animation is a little less smooth. It's more choppy, more robotic. A six frames per second animation is even rougher. 30 frames is smoother. 60 frames is even smoother, etc. So frames per second is basically how smooth the animation is. And traditionally for like literally a hundred years, animation's been around a hundred years. Did you know Mickey Mouse is going to be a hundred years old, like in one or two years? Felix the cat. Felix the cat is actually, uh, was invented in 1919. That's a hundred years ago. You know, all of these classic characters, Superman was invented in 1938. That's coming soon. All of these characters are a hundred years old. The invention of animation is at least a hundred years or so. And they figured out a long time ago that more frames, more drawings is more fluid, more lifelike. But at a certain point, it's you don't have to go higher. We know with gaming, yeah, I, I need a 60 FPS monitor, 144 FPS, and etc. But with animation, 24 frames is often a very good minimum starting point of smoothness. And so what a frame is, is a drawing and a change in the drawing. So let's say I've got a stick figure. You don't have to do anything at the moment, but let's say I've got a stick figure and it's on frame one. I want it to then start to move and animate while I need a new frame. At the moment, I've only got one frame, one drawing. I need a new frame. So we're gonna very, very often be working with multiple frames and layers and such. Um, try this. So just draw a stick figure, whatever. You can uh, make it in the little corner. You can draw it on the whole thing. Just draw a quick little stick figure. And I want it to start to move. And the illusion of motion is that it's a drawing where the pose is like this, the pose is like this, and then the next drawing, the pose is like this, and the next drawing, the pose is like this, and like this, and like this, and that all comes together to, for motion. Did any of you ever play with a flip book when you were little, right? You flip it on the corner here and then it like animates because each one is a little drawing, slightly different. And when you flip through it, it animates. Adobe Animate lets you do that, but more powerfully. I have one drawing, frame one. Here's frame two. Right click frame two. This menu pops up. Select insert blank keyframe. keyframe. I have a blank frame. Frame one, frame two, let's add a third frame. So right click frame three, insert blank keyframe, and do that until you get to five. Right click. Obviously at any point, if you're having trouble, raise your hand. I or the assistants will help you out. If you're there at home as well, ask a question in the chat. But anyway, right click, insert blank keyframe one at a time until you get to frame five. If I click on that first frame, I see it. If I click on frame two, it's empty. Frame three, empty, four, and five. And it's telling you I'm on frame two. I'm on frame four. I can, I can click and hold and drag that frame number to also jump between frames. 
I can grab this playhead and move it from frame to frame. I can click on a frame. I can also use the keyboard shortcuts, uh, period for the next frame, comma for the previous frame. There's like always like 10 different ways to do the same thing. And that is not for confusion. That is for some people want to do it this way. Some people want to do it that way. Sometimes this way is easier. Sometimes that way is faster. Question. So perhaps it's easy here with just periods. Perhaps it's easier with mouse. Perhaps it's easier typing. Okay, jump me, click here, jump me to frame 99. Press enter. So there's 10 ways to do the same thing. In the beginning, it is overwhelming. Lots to do, lots to learn. But we'll get there. So frame two. Now I want to draw the character moving slightly differently. It'd be really nice if I could see what I previously drew. There is a way. I'll show you in a moment. But let's say change the character somehow. Frame three. Change the character somehow. And four. We're doing it the hard way on, on purpose. I, I can't see what my previous drawing is. So how do I know how to move it? Of course, we'll get to that. But for the moment, I'm just showing you. This is known as a frame-by-frame -frame animation. This is what classic animation from 100 years ago to now is based on that you would have a character, Mickey Mouse, uh, he looks the cat, Spike Spiegel, etc. You would draw them one frame at a time, moving the hand from here to here to here to here to here to here, grab the phone, draw it. Coming back, coming back, coming back, talk, move the mouth. And every change is a drawing, basically. And here's what I've drawn so far. Okay. If you did the tutorial, you might have seen about testing your movie. Or at the least here, there's a play button down at the bottom timeline right here. That's got a shortcut, enter. If you just press enter, Here's my animation. There's a loop. Play. There we go. So the character is running really fast. Too fast, not smooth enough. But at the very least, what I'm showing you here is that animation is basically little movements that add up. If you did the, um, some of the tutorials showed you about testing your movie. Control, test movie, try that. Test in, um, animate, sure. Control, test in browser. That's got a shortcut instead of your mouse going back and forth, moving the hand over and over. Uh, there's shortcuts there. Control Enter on the keyboard. So it opens up in my browser. Get that. Okay, just ignore that. If you do the test in Animate, Control test in animate. That's good enough. Now, my character's kind of moving around, sure, but all my text is just blinking on and off. That makes sense because I only had my text on one of my five frames. So it appears for one thirtieth of a second. I want my text to always be visible. I want the little guy to animate, but I want the text to always be visible. In Photoshop, you would know that when you create a project, you have different layers. This layer has this text. This layer has this background, et cetera. Animate has the same thing. 
So I've got one layer so far, layer one. I want to change the name of that layer, call it character, for example. Double click. Double click layer one, call it or change it to character or the name of your character, whatever. Press enter. So I've got a layer called character. I want to make a new layer somewhere within where my mouse is at right there. Maybe you've never seen this icon before. Maybe you've never used Adobe Animate before, but possibly and logically, there might be a button somewhere there to add a new layer so that I can then have multiple parts of my animation. Here, add a new layer. I've got a layer for a character. I will add a new layer. Double click, call it text. Just uh, write something. Now when my project plays, there's something that doesn't change. So what I'm showing here is in an animation type of a project, start to think about and consider and practice anything that's going to be animated, either a movie, either a game, either a website or interactive project. Um, most likely you're going to work with multiple layers. Everything that's going to be in your project is probably going to be on its own layer. A layer for my background. My background's this castle. A layer for my character, this knight. A layer for the birds flying by. A layer for the sun setting. A um, layer to show your high score. So that's one thing to, to get used to. Whereas if you're using Illustrator or Photoshop, you can probably get by with everything on one layer. That'll work all right, but if you separate things into multiple layers, it things work a little easier, and especially in animate. So let's say here, now that I know a little bit about the importance of layers, what's that? The extra layer. Yes. Right. Uh, one of the assistants, could you come a little help right here? You got two people that need help there. So if you can help them, uh, they'll be no problem. They'll be there with you one moment. So, Angie, if you can help. Oh, oh okay. Yes. What? My favorite animation? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would have to say Cowboy Bebop. Not the Netflix one, of course, the the uh, the animation. That's the one I would like the most. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're working with multiple layers. And now that we know that the importance of layers, let's do this. Delete everything. We're going to start one more time. There's a little deletion button here. So my hard hard made character delete it. My text layer, delete it. And now let's think a little bit more completely. We're going to have a character in an environment. So I want a background layer. I want a character layer and a text layer. What's that? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. We're going to delete everything. Let's delete all the layers and start one more time. Now that we kind of have a little bit more of a plan, I want to create three layers, background layer, character layer, 
text layer. Background. Text. And character. Now the order of the layers does matter because looking from top to bottom, this top layer is going to block this bottom layer, which is going to block the next one. So looking down on it, the order matters. In my case, in a very simple idea, maybe it doesn't matter now, but as you get into more complex projects, it matters. So I probably, however you did this, you probably want the background at the very bottom and the text at the very top. And notice you can just drag and drop very easily. Okay, put this one at the top, put this one at the bottom. Or try text, character, background. If they're not in that order, just drag them around. So press control one to just kind of zoom the screen or however you want it actually. I'm, I'm gonna zoom in like this, but if you want a smaller screen or a bigger screen, a bigger zoom, whatever, but I'll press control one just to fill up the screen. And we're gonna create a background here. Um, however you wanna do this, uh, I'm gonna create um, just you know a floor, a tree, the sun, maybe a road here. Let's create some background. Again, later on, we'll use the actual pen tablets to draw easier, but just create some background. Make sure it's not a second. Right, so if I've got this background, in my case, I drew this very simply where I've got a tree and it's on the road here. But in my case, this is tormenting me right here where the line is going across. So there's many ways that I can fix this or it doesn't matter. But this is again, further learning about the software. Let's say in my case, I don't like that I've got my tree, you know, the, the, the horizon line is going through the tree. That doesn't make sense. A tree is solid in this world. It's not transparent. So if I wanted to erase this extra part here, we have an eraser tool right over here, E for eraser. We were using the brush tool to draw our lines. And then maybe you can use the eraser to erase what you don't want. Notice how I have a certain size of the eraser. And on the right side, we're going to, we've got these properties on the right side. Whatever tool you're using, brush tool, 
eraser tool, text tool, they're all going to have um, properties. They have all of these extra settings. So even with just the eraser tool, because I want to erase these extra lines, when I go to the eraser over here, I see all of these modes. I see these options. I see a size, all of this stuff. So uh, over the weekend, hopefully you, if you can get access to the software, and remember we saw that on collegebuys.org or whatever, you can get the software for home for $40 for six months. Obviously, we've got the software for you to use for free here. If you want to further than use it at home, you need to get it at home. But we've got the software here. You should be able to do fine in the class if you only use the software here. But as I said before, those that work more on their own pace, you get more out of things. So right now, what I'm showing kind of in general to get used to the interface, you hopefully want to practice it. Notice I'm doing the zoom in, zoom out, and all of that. Get used to, well, I, I first pressed control one to see it all. But then when I wanted to do those little erasures, well, it was a little hard zoomed out this far. Maybe this is when I want to hold control on the keyboard and mouse wheel scroll in right here and then go in and erase it. This is the part where then we, uh, our perfectionism, we have to rein that in. I know I have some of that. I'm sure you have some of that where it's got to be perfect. It's my, it's my invention, my idea. Great. But we are having this eight week long class in the summer. And there is, a, there is some amount of room for perfectionism, but I definitely want to say, don't let your perfectionism take over. What I mean by that is I'm trying to erase here and I erased it that much. And when I'm zoomed in 200%, yeah, I see that. But when I'm zoomed in at a normal size, it might not be noticeable. And especially when our projects are running at 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, the point is you don't have to stress over every line, especially when you're on deadlines. Notice it's kind of interesting. I'm trying to erase it a little bit here, and not until I let go of the mouse does it kind of actually apply it. Might be slightly different than the end result. And again, that's for multiple reasons, the size of the brush, how much are you zoomed in, et cetera. So this is just practice. Not going to be perfect, but I'm just showing that um, I've drawn a background and then I'm going to refine it a little bit. Maybe my project is black and white, but maybe I want color. We have this paint bucket tool on the left keyboard shortcut K, some of these shortcuts make sense. B for brush, um, T for text. Some of them make less sense. K for paint bucket. I guess there's a K in bucket. Maybe K, kick the bucket, whatever way you want to remember, but K for the bucket. And then I want to fill in a color. So in my case here, the color of my bucket, pick a color, start to drop colors in, start to colorize it. Take this black and white drawing and start to fill in colors. But then we will quickly see that it doesn't quite work how you think. So, for example, here, I'm going to color my tree. Okay, tree. I'm going to color my sun. Sun. I'm going to color the sky. Sky. Okay. Color the ground. Ground not working. It only let me uh, colorize the tree and the sun. Any idea why maybe it didn't let me color those other things? Yes. Because the line is open. Mm -hmm. The line is open. That's a very advanced answer. Yes. The line is open. Um, this shape here is complete. It's got a beginning, middle, and end. The shape here is complete. And our eye sees a sky. Our eye sees a ground and a road. But Animate doesn't. It sees a line and a line and a line, whereas here it sees a complete shape. So it's not letting me fill in the background. 
because it's not a complete shape. Now here's where we have to think on the next level. I need to close the shape of the sky. Let me show you this. I'm gonna go back to black. I'm going to draw. I don't think you can see it on my projector, but I'm drawing a shape. I don't think you can see it on my projector, but I'm drawing a closed shape. It goes all the way around over here outside of the visible area back to the beginning here. So there's the visible part here that everyone will see. And outside of the camera, basically, I'm drawing a line just to make sure it's all closed. And then that is a closed shape. So when I get the bucket, get the color, fill it in. All of this outside of it, it's not going to exist. When the project is complete, no one will see this, just what's in the view of the camera. If you were trying to fill in your color and it didn't fill in, well, of course not. Adobe Animate doesn't see it as a shape. It's just a line. So now let's say here for the, uh, for the ground, I need a line that closes it. Show it, but I then move a line now over here. Over here. This is now closed shape, so I can fill in the color of the of the ground. Clicking, it's not filling in. There must still be some empty spot somewhere. So sometimes that's when you zoom in. Make sure it's all properly filled in. I'm doing something here without thinking. So notice for me, I've been using this software for years. I, I'm zooming in and zooming out very easily. But when I zoom in and I need to then move to another part of the screen, okay, well, I've got the, uh, the little move items here, sure. But to do it faster, here's an advanced thing. Hold down the space bar. And for the moment, you get this little hand and with the while holding the space bar, then I can move around, I can shift around. So I'm doing the control scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And then I'm pressing the space bar and clicking and dragging to move to different parts of the screen. That's the same way as if I was clicking the little zoom icon. OK. And that's the same way as if I was scrolling this thing around. OK. But now this is a little bit more efficient. Keyboard shortcuts. Your mouse is already on your. One hand is already on the mouse, one hand is already on the key, keyboard. So you can just quickly zoom in, space bar, move around. Have more practice with um, the nuances of all of this as we go on. But for the moment, I'm just trying to fill in All right, so I got some sort of background. Then here's what's going to be confusing as a beginner. Which layer am I working on? What asset am I working with? What thing am I animating? What, what am I doing? You have to think in multiple dimensions because you've got the layer of the background, the layer of the character, the layer of the text. 
and you can very easily accidentally do something on the wrong layer. So what you want to get used to is, okay, you're working with layers. You also want to work with the layer that you think you're working on. So if you look on the corner here, you've got create a layer, delete a layer, create folders for organization. You've got all of these other icons over here as well. One of them is hide layers. Notice clicking on that hides my layers. We've got this lock, lock layers. You can also do it on individual layers. Clicking at the top affects everything at once. Lock or protect everything at once. Go or hide everything at once. Here's interesting, show me outlines. Every, every line that you're making um, is made of simple lines and shapes. So these icons at the top affect everything. But for the moment, I want to draw a character on its own layer, but I don't accidentally want to draw it on the background layer. So I want to lock the background layer. If I try to draw on the background layer, it'll give you the no, you can't do that. If you try to do it, it'll pop up. Do you want to unlock it? No. I want the background layer to be locked because now I want to draw on another layer. So selecting character layer where I can draw character. Just I'm going to do this very simple again, just stick figures. Character on its own layer, you can show it, hide it. Background on its own layer. Text. I'm going to lock the layers I'm not working with. I'm going to add text. This time, instead of drawing it, I, it's hard to draw text. I'll use the text tool. I have a tool that's got all of these fonts nicely designed. So um, lock your character layer, lock your background layer, select your text layer, switch to your text tool, keyboard shortcut T, and then click on the screen and notice now you get the properties there of, the, of that text tool. Um, what uh, size, what color, what font, the properties of this text tool, the properties of this pen tool, the properties of this hand tool, all of these tools have some properties. So this panel is always changing over here based on what tool you've got. So switching to the text tool, picking a nice size here, I don't know, maybe a hundred, typing some text, the end. Picking a cool font. color, options, filters, lots of stuff. Now, I added this text, but that's not exactly where I wanted it. I wanted it higher, or I wanted it moved, or whatever. Uh, a tool you'll often use is this very first one at the top, the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. I think about it as a move. I want to move things. So I type the text, but it's in the wrong place. So I'll switch over to the move tool, the selection tool. Then I can grab my object and move it to different places. Again, this is the importance of locking your layers. You don't accidentally want to grab the wrong thing and interact with it the wrong way. Um, it's a good idea to lock the layers that you're not working with. That way you won't accidentally do the wrong thing. I'm moving this text around. I want to move my little character. Actually, I want it to the right side. I'm going to lock the text layer, lock the background, unlock the character, and I'm going to move the character. But then what happens is, I start to look at 
oh, what, what am I doing here? Suddenly I'm kind of stretching out the line. It's not what I wanted. But let me grab it and move it. Whoops, I'm moving the head. I'm going to see very quickly that, again, this type of drawing, I said it like once a little while ago. And anyone remember what type of drawing app is this? I said there were two types. Anyone remember? It rhymes or sounds similar to my name? A, a vector drawing tool. So a vector drawing tool, a vector drawing app is mathematically defined drawings. Behind the scenes, there are calculations that are calculating the size of this circle and that line and such. And what I did here on accident is I altered the equation by dragging it in. Okay, now it's got a long head of hair, I guess. But what I wanted to do was move the thing. And here's knowing that it's a vector drawing program um, lets me uh, work with doing advanced things like animation and the like. Now, technically, what I've drawn with this character, technically, the way I drew it without even trying, technically, I drew the head as one piece. And then over here, the body was another piece. And notice here. Even just simply how you use the mouse and the tools um, has different results. So if I get my, mouse, my move tool close to this object at the very edge, the tool changes like, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna warp. You're gonna manipulate the, uh, the drawing. See that? So here's the normal move. If I get close to it, we get that icon. And if I click and drag, that's what happens. If instead I click on it, it kind of selected it. And then now when I put my mouse on it, it's got the little move icons. Okay, I move that. If I click on the body, it moves that. Go to the edge of it and click and drag, it does that. So the one object, the one mathematically defined drawing can be manipulated in many ways. And even the way I've done it here, um, when I when I drew something, it, I was in a in a different mode uh, that created an object. I did that an accident actually, and I, and I forget if that is the default or not. Uh, the point is that even every single every single tool has these sorts of nuances to it. So even I'm just trying to move the character. Over. How do I do that? So I could with the selection tool make a little selection box. If each piece is its own piece that can be individually manipulated, I need to select the whole character. So with the move tool, the selection tool, I've drawn a selection box. And because I've locked my other layers, I don't accidentally also select the sun and the dirt. I've only selected the character and then I can move it. Again, depending how I select it, I'm moving it. Whoops, I forgot to select the face. And I forgot to select the leg. So this is something to get used to with this type of software. Selected everything. Being everything. So all of this that I've done so far has been on one frame, multiple layers. I want to practice one more time what I showed earlier that we did about a little bit of movement. But now that I know I've got multiple layers, I want the text, I want the background to not move at the moment, but I want the character to move. Let's do this. So in the uh, timeline here, I'm going to jump to frame five on the background, click frame, fra frame five on the background, and then right click, and then this time select insert frame. So we have all of these frames, keyframes, blank keyframes, convert. We have all of these things. Just click plain old frame. 
on your text layer, not on the character, on the text layer, do the same thing. Frame five, right click, insert frame. The timeline is showing between frames one and five, I have a drawing and is continued to be visible for five frames. On the text layer, I have a drawing and it continues to be visible for five frames. On the character layer, I have one frame, one drawing, but it's only visible one frame. It's not visible, it doesn't exist on frame two or three or four or five. And if I were to, to, to test the movie, everything else is um, completely visible but this is blinking on and off. And that's exactly what this timeline is saying here. Yeah, make the text and the background visible for five frames. The character only exists for one frame. And if you press play, it's gonna blink on and off because it only exists on one frame. Now, compared to last time where we kind of drew it uh, frame by frame, we'll do it slightly differently here. Frame two, of the character layer, right click that and this time select insert keyframe. All right, so that copied the previous frame, copied it to the next frame. What I wanna do with my character, we're not gonna animate it very fancy yet. All I'm gonna do with the character is select it and move it a little bit somewhere to the left, let's say. So frame one, it's here. Frame two, it's here. So again, first thing I did was right-click frame two of the character, right-click, insert keyframe. Frame two, click the actual frame when you unlock it. You can click the frame and it selects it all for you and then you can move it over a little bit. Frame three, right click, insert keyframe. Click that frame to select the character, move it over a little bit. Or right click, insert keyframe, move it over a little bit. Get the idea. It's not going to look like it's actually walking. It's going to look like a robotic type of animation, but I'm making animation here. Animation is one drawing changing to another drawing, changing to another, to another, to another. Or a background that is visible once and then doesn't change for five frames, or text that is visible on one drawing and then doesn't change. So even the, the terminology of what is the little what what does the little black line mean? What does the little black circle mean? What does this icon mean? There's a lot of nuance to learn, uh, but basically, wherever there's a little black dot, there is a drawing there. There's an original drawing there. There's a change in animation there, and that makes sense. This background has been drawn once and doesn't change for five frames. This text has been drawn once and doesn't change for five frames. This character has been drawn once and then it's changed. It's moved from these coordinates to these coordinates, to this, to this, to this. And obviously if I was really animating it, also the legs would be moving and the arms would be moving and the hair would be bobbing and the ears and everything. So far, I have this little character running really fast. I go to control, Test movie, you get the full effect under control, test movie, animate, or control enter. There is there. It's moving way too fast. It's phasing between dimensions. So if I then spent all the time to make 500 drawings, not just five drawings, 500 drawings to make each limb move little by little, the ears bopping up and down and the eyes blinking. And then the sun moving and the trees rustling, the leaves rustling. Then that's a big old complex animation. But before we get to that point, we have to little by little 
even just learn the interface. So far, I would say we've learned maybe like 1% of it. We're, we're not going to need to know 100% of the interface, but we definitely need to know more than 1% of the interface, and that'll come with time. So here's the project so far. Remember to save every once in a while. We've got this character moving way too fast. I'm going to slow down the animation. We have one drawing, one drawing, one drawing, one drawing, one drawing, one change, one change, one change, one change. Instead, I want a little bit of movement, a little bit of pause, a little bit of movement, a little bit of pause. I'm going to, on frame one, on this keyframe, on this drawing, I'm going to right click, insert frame. Actually, wait. Uh, I guess depending the way we did it at this point, it's the easiest way. Um, all right, for the moment, let's not do it just this way yet. Okay, let's do it with a keyboard shortcut. You can do a lot of things with the mouse and buttons and such, but eventually you want to really learn keyboard shortcuts. And notice this, as you right click here, these popped up to show you keyboard shortcuts. And here's the funny thing. If you select insert frame, um, right click insert frame, that is similar to on the keyboard pressing F5, not, not the F and the five, but the key, F5. Uh, try it this way to be a little faster. Click on that frame, frame one, press F5 on the keyboard. Okay. So now we have a keyframe, a blank keyframe. And we have a, a keyframe. On that one, press F5. Then go to the next keyframe, the little circle, F5. The next one, F5. The next one, F5. So what I'm doing here is a moment ago in five frames, one drawing quickly, drawing, 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 drawing quickly. But here I'm saying show the drawing instead of, so one drawing here is one thirtieth of a second. Here I'm saying, no, show it for two frames. So I'm showing it for two thirtieths of a second or one fifteenth. So show it twice as long, show it twice as long, then change, show it twice, show it twice, show it twice. So now it, it still walks over kind of fast, but not as fast. But now the background's blinking. Now the background's disappearing. But yeah, that's what I have here. Show my background from here to here, and then no more. Show my text from here to here, and then no more. No, let's show the background all the way from five to 10. So anywhere in the background, let's say the final frame here, press F5, 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 F5. That's the same as right-clicking insert frame. So now the background is visible all of that time, 10 frames. The text is only visible five frames from one to five. The character is from one to 10. The background is from one to 10. When I test it, Okay, the, ba the background stays stationary. The text is blinking. The character is moving. I don't want the text to blink. So same thing. Add more frames, add more time, add more visibility. Right-click insert or keyboard shortcut. You want to remember some of these. You want to memorize these a lot faster. Insert frame, you're going to do that over and over. F5. You're going to... Um, you're going to select everything at once all the time. Control, Alt, A. You're going to cut things out, memorize that one. You're going to convert, you're going to memorize that one. These that you do often, you're going to memorize these as you keep doing them. So here, F5, 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 F5. Let's say I put too many on accident. So now what happens there? Oh, the whole thing looks like it blinks. Well, that's what I told it to do here on accident. I'm telling it, here's my animation, show all of this. And then on frame 11, show my text, but nothing else is there. And then it loops back to the beginning and it does it over and over. So I accidentally added an extra frame and animate makes this weird blink. Right click, remove frame. Remove frame, 
Shift F5. So now the blink isn't there. On this animation so far, there's still plenty to learn. We're going to wind it down in a moment. We have the importance of layers. We're starting to look at the first concepts of frames. I still don't quite understand keyframes, blank keyframes. That'll come with time and practice. But animation is drawings over some amount of time. More drawings, more smooth. Less drawings, less smooth. We have to learn the concepts of drawing and animation in addition to just the interface itself. And I have these amazing ideas, but we need to know the tool to be able to bring those ideas to life. This week, the homework this week is the introductory icebreaker thing, but the unofficial homework, if you can get the software at home, I would recommend um, go through these as many as you want. Go through these first chapters of the book. And again, this guide, I'm going to put it right now onto Canvas. So how do I get to this? You can get to it somewhere in the help file, but I'll put it on Canvas right now. I would recommend as many of these as you want to look at before we come back next time, look at them. If you don't want to, if you can't, you know, even if you don't get the software, I would still browse some of these a little bit as unofficial homework. You're not going to get graded on it, but I would look at as many of these as you can handle between now and next Monday. And that link, I'm going to add it right here in the um, Canvas module in the resources. Title it nicer in a moment, but in the resources at the very end here, read this. So in Canvas, that book, the, the book I put it there, I'll put a nicer thing there later, but uh, there it is on Canvas in the uh, week one resources. All of this that I did today, as I said, I'm recording it on Zoom. I will add the recording later on today. You'll be able to replay the recording once it finishes processing. You will see it in week one live session. Monday's thing is there, but today when it finishes recording, I will add it there. You can replay it. So you've got the introductory homework to do. You've got this brand new software to play with. If you can get it at home, if not, at least do the, the little bit of reading there. When we come back next Monday, we'll look at more looking at the software. I'll break out the tablets to be able to draw even better. We'll start to look at concepts of creating characters. Check the syllabus again to see what we're kind of going to do week by week. Um, what's coming up in the semester right here. Characters and model sheets. So I'll, I'll end the class in a moment. We, if you want to stay and practice just a little bit more and ask a couple of questions, we'll be here for a little bit. Next week, we're going to be starting uh, open lab time, probably an hour or so. If you want to stay from you know 3.30 to, or 2.30 to 3.30 or so, we'll have lab time if you want to stay starting next week. For the moment, you can stay for a little bit. Um, and then, of course, contact me or the assistants via the uh, inbox on Canvas. And this is week one of CIS 125. So I'll end the recorder. And if you want to give back the headphones, I'll pick those up. And we'll be back next time.